Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here with another episode of Why I Love This Lens. Today I'm going to talk about the Fujifilm XF 50mm f2. That's this little guy right here. So, we all know that telephoto lenses rock. They allow you to narrow down your scene and they allow you to isolate your subject or part of your subject against a nice soft blurry background. And this effect allows you to create a nice sharp point of focus uh, with the added depth in the image. However, it's not always fun or convenient to carry around a big telephoto lens, especially if you're traveling or trying to move light and fast through the landscape, or just be inconspicuous on the streets. They can be pretty cumbersome and oftentimes pretty heavy, put a lot of strain on your shoulder and back when you're carrying them around all day long. And that's where short telephoto lenses can be a really good compromise. They allow you to get that telephoto look, uh, at least zoom out partway in your subject. The trade-off is that you have to get a little bit closer to your subject matter in order to maximize that telephoto look. But this is what makes short telephoto lenses so good for shooting portraits and also for isolating specific pieces of subject matter in your nearby environment. I've been using the little 50mm f2 ever since it was first introduced and I gotta say it's one sweet little lens. It's way smaller and lighter than Fuji's 90mm which is a great lens but it's a little bit cumbersome. And when compared to Fuji's 56 1.2 lens uh, this little 50 is half the size, half the weight, half the cost. It focuses twice as close and it's weather sealed. And it still allows you to get amazingly soft backgrounds and get that really cool out of focus look behind your sharp subject. And with the excellent high ISO performance of the X-Series cameras, which is pretty much like ISO who cares, uh, that extra stop and a half between the 56 and the 50 becomes pretty negligible in most situations. Having used it extensively for about the past three years, uh, this little Fuji has really worked its way into my heart and become one of my favorite Fuji lenses of all time. In fact, if you meet me out in the world, there's a really good chance I'm going to have this lens in my bag with me. So let's dive in and see what makes this lens so great. So like all of the other Fujicrons in the series, as we like to call them, these little weather-sealed small compact f2 lenses, the 50 is built to minimize size and weight without compromising quality. So this little thing is pretty much a 2.3 inch long and wide cylinder, uh, 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters, and it weighs 7 ounces. So that's pretty tiny. We're talking pocket size. Even with the lens hood on, it's still really small. In fact, a lot of times when I'm out shooting, going fast and light with just one, a camera and a couple lenses, I'll just keep my second spare lens in my pocket. And really, I'm just a little guy, and I don't even have very big pockets in my clothes. <laughs> it's constructed with 9 elements in 7 groups and it includes one extra low dispersion element which helps reduce flare and chromatic aberration and increase overall sharpness. And with the conversion to APS-C sensor size that the Fujis use, uh, that 50 millimeter essentially gives you about a 76 millimeter angle of view. So this puts it just beyond the range of what we like to consider normal lenses and the beginning of what we consider short telephoto lenses. Now we don't often think of a lens in the 70 millimeter range as one that's going to produce a very highly stylized look. But with a close focus distance of only 12 inches, this little 50 can isolate relatively close subjects with an incredible amount of sharpness against a nice soft blurry background. And like most of the other XF lenses in the line, the 50mm f2 has an all metal housing, so it'll take quite a beating, believe me. And 10 points of weather sealing on the lens help keep out dust and moisture uh, and give you more comfort when shooting in challenging environments. It's rated down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit but I've used the 50 and most of the other XF lenses as well in way colder temperatures. I've shot at 20 below Fahrenheit with this lens many times and I've never had a problem. The autofocus works well and everything functions perfectly even at those really cold temperatures. It has a numbered aperture ring and a nine bladed aperture mechanism which gives you those really soft creamy beautiful out of focus backgrounds especially when you're shooting at very wide apertures. Generally the way this works is the more blades your aperture ring has uh, the tighter, more circular, and seamless those circles of confusion are going to be. And it's these circles of confusion that create that, that wonderful, soft, shallow, out-of-focus look behind your subjects. By comparison, the Fuji 56 actually has a seven-bladed aperture ring, and that lens is considered to be a bokeh powerhouse by most photographers who use it. All of Fuji's F2 lenses are incredibly sharp, with the 90 perhaps being the, the sharpest lens in the entire line. Well, the 50 isn't far behind, and it holds an amazing amount of edge detail and crisp, sharp focus with very few artifacts and any kind of chromatic aberration. Another benefit to these little tiny Fujicron lenses 
is that the, the motors inside are so fast because they don't have a lot of glass to move. And so this gives the 50 an impressively fast autofocus performance. It's able to acquire and track subjects with a very high degree of accuracy. I've shot a wide variety of sports, action, and fast moving subjects with a 50, and I've been very impressed with how quick and responsive the autofocus performance is on this lens. I don't know if it's as fast as the 90 or the 100 to 400, uh, both of which use that ultra fast linear autofocus motor inside, but it's pretty darn quick. I think you'll find the 50 to be an excellent performer for shooting just about any kind of subject matter. Like I said, I've shot a lot of fast moving sports and action with it, and I've been really impressed. It, it hasn't let me down. In fact, I haven't seen any kind of limitations with autofocus performance on this lens. So as you can see from the, all the image examples, I've had a ton of fun with the 50mm f2. I've used it for landscapes, aerials, portraits, uh, sports in action, isolating close nature scenes. It's such a versatile lens, it'll pretty much do everything. And in fact, a lot of my favorite photos in the past couple years were made with the 50, including the cover photo for my ebook X Series Unlimited. It's gone with me on every single trip I've made in the past three years. All my three trips to Scotland, uh, winter fat bike trips, uh, week-long cycling trips, pretty much everywhere I go. Hiking, walking around town, flying. As I said, it's incredibly versatile, uh, and there's really nowhere that I go where I won't take this lens. No matter what kind of photography I'm doing, or what kind of trip I'm taking, my base lens kit always includes at least a telephoto and a wide angle. And if I'm going light and fast, then the 50 will count as the telephoto, because it allows me to get those compressed shallow depth of field looks. And it's close enough to a normal focal length that it will count for that category as well if I don't want to take a third lens with me. Although, as I said in my last video when I talked about the 35 f2, uh, that lens is usually in my bag as well all the time. So between those two lenses, the 50 and the 35 f2, one or both of those lenses pretty much goes with me everywhere. I think those little Fujicrons, as we like to call them, are one of the best things that Fuji's come out with. And I think this 50 fits so well on the line. It's a great little lens, it's so versatile. It's light enough to take anywhere, sharp enough to shoot critical work. It has a really nice close focus range that allows you to isolate specific elements in your scene. It's a very fast autofocus, which makes it great for shooting action and sports. It's a wonderful portrait lens. And it focuses close enough for some basic macro work, uh, even more so when you put on one of those little Fuji extension tubes like the MCX11 or 16. And most importantly, it has that Fuji fun factor. It's such a great little lens, it's going to add a lot of enjoyment to your shooting experience when you're out in the world. So given its performance and its relatively low price tag, I would highly recommend this lens to any Fuji shooter. You really can't go wrong with any of the little Fujicron lenses. Uh, there's the 16, 28, and then the 23, 35, and 50 f2, and then of course the 90. All of those are great lenses, but if you're looking for a very compact lens, that'll get you that telephoto soft shallow depth of field look, uh, then the 50 is definitely worth considering. So as I said, I love the 50. Uh, I've shown you what I can do with it. Uh, if you want to get some similar looks, then, then that might be the next lens for you. So I hope you found this little mini review helpful. Uh, I'm obviously a huge fan of the Fuji gear, but I tend not to review every single thing that comes along. I don't review all the lenses or all the bodies. Uh, I only like to review and feature the, the specific items that I'm in love with, especially when it comes to lenses, because I think that lenses are the most valuable compositional tools that you have in your entire photography kit. And if you are a Fuji shooter or you're thinking about getting into the system, please check out my best-selling ebook, X Series Unlimited. It's considered to be the missing manual for the Fujis, and it'll teach you everything you need to know in order to maximize your own creativity and confidence with your X Series camera. Also, feel free to leave me a comment or ask me a question below. Uh, and you can find me on social media and Patreon at Dan Bailey Photo, and you can visit my website as well. So thanks very much for watching. Have fun with your Fuji out there, and I'll see you next time.